Okay, everyone, this is my spoiler review of Sunny, Episode 7. Now, this episode opens with a flashback, finally giving us some answers about this counselor, Ito, who we saw was murdered by a homebot, and we see that the reason he was murdered is because he wanted to curb Yakuza activity. So he was actually a good counselor, and Hime actually just drop the homebot at him on the steps. It's not actually like the homebot itself went and murdered him. It was different than that. And then you see him ages wipes the homebot's memory of that specific incident. And you see in a more humorous moment, which I like, they blend in really well in the show. They have the homebot say, it's time for pancakes. Now, when we go to see Susie, her fuse is shorter than ever. She's so short with Mixie here when she's telling Mixie just to put her clothes on. And you see that Susie's grieving her son still, obviously, but she's also, in a way, grieving Sunny. Yes, she needs Sunny for Masa's memories, but she also is attached to Sunny now. But you'll see Sunny starts to come back online, and she says, should I wake her up? And Mixie says, she needs to be deprogrammed first, like someone coming back from a cult. And there's a great pause, and she's like, not me. I saw a documentary. I thought that was hysterical but of course Susie's gonna wake up Sunny when Mixie leaves and it's crazy because this version of Sunny has Susie's kind of attitude here which I thought was fascinating so however Hime messed with Sunny there's something to it that it feels like Susie's personality is in there now my favorite line of the episode possibly of the show was when Susie brings up to Sunny she should talk about her PTSD and Sunny says I'm a homebot, Susie. We don't get PTSD. And Susie says, apparently PMS isn't out of the question. Gold. And you'll see that Susie calls this mysterious character of D. And she says, it's been really bad. I miss you. And again, brings up being a terrible friend. We still don't know exactly what she did to her. Now, while this is happening, Mixie comes back. She overhears this, which is important. But Mixie got fired for being late and basically is now frustrated with Susie because she feels like Susie is codependent and over-reliant on her. And that Susie really isn't that sorry about it. So she gets a lot of the dirty laundry out here and she's like, it's impossible to criticize you. You walk around with some kind of grief shield and no one can question you. This is pretty spot on. And she brings up to the point that if you wanted to actually live in Japan for the culture and not to hide, why not learn Japanese? Why no friends? And this is interesting because earlier in the episode, Sunny will say to her, she's not going to enjoy the game show because of course she didn't learn Japanese. This is a dig people always have at Susie and this was also a dig Masa had at Susie. It's important because like Mixie's calling out, it's showing you like what were her real reasons for moving here and it was to hide. And then she's mad at Susie because she turned Sunny on and she's like it's messed up when someone cares about a homebot more than a person. So this could also be just a little hint of a personality trait that I believe Masa had and what ended up happening with him was his obsession with the homebot at some point over his family. But Sunny will gut punch Mixie here which was pretty funny. I didn't expect that. Now let's go into everything where the episode will shift here and goes to Hime and the Yakuza. And she says to her dead father, you couldn't have waited another day or two because she just broke into Masa's computer. And if she had completed this goal in getting the dark manual, her father would have promoted her and to take over. But she's told by the nurse that he was fine one minute, then gone the next, and that he wasn't alone in his death. His nephew was with him, Jin. Now we know from the bathtub scene that... Jin has ulterior motives here and does not want Hime getting power. And they're already deciding to have a vote without her on who's going to take over now that the dad is dead. But that is where Hime will come in and accuse Jin in front of everyone of killing him. And Jin says she's not in her right mind, a woman in mourning. Super sexist. And she pitches her side to the council and says, the future for Yakuza is me and that's how we're going to stay strong because we're weakening because we know she has this power now of the dark manual. Now, where the episode closes with Hime's storyline is we see she is out for Jin now. She's like, he killed my father, tells Tetsu, who really sounds like believes Jin, but will do anything for Hime and loves her. She tells him to get a gun. So that will be interesting, and that's showing kind of the break in Yakuza. I also think that with Hime, they're setting up a little bit of a redemption arc here because so many things are being wronged to her and how she's been mistreated by the Yakuza. So I feel like that always is something in writing where you see there's going to be some kind of turn here for her. And especially she was also at Masa's funeral. You can't forget that too. So there's still more to Hime we have to learn, even though she's absolutely crazy. Now Susie and Mixie go to get Sunny checked out again and they find out Sunny has a tracker. So the Yakuza's been tracking Susie, Noriko, and a mystery person 
in an apartment building. And they know it's Yakuza because it's only been a day. And speaking of Noriko, at the prison, Noriko is basically warned by an inmate about a girl who was once there who got herself thrown in on purpose and they had to move her to safety because the other woman basically were going to hurt her. So Noriko, it gets her out of being stuck in this prison spot, which I think is good because you don't want to get stuck there. There was a scene even in this episode where they're playing the game that kind of felt like a very filler scene you didn't even need just filled time so I, I don't think it's the best move to have such an interesting character as Noriko stuck in one location so I'm happy it sounds like they're going to get that moving away from that now while Susie is looking for the tracker Mixie has her phone and sees the text from D that says I'm sorry you're having a hard time but that doesn't change what you did to me we're not friends anymore Susie please don't call me again Mixie will delete this now at first when I watched this I was like is that just like Mixie being a bad person and like is this kind of an evil thing to do but then I watched it again and I thought no I think Mixie is protecting Susie because she probably thinks that text is going to send her even darker space that she probably can't even handle to read something like that right now. We'll also get a nice payoff moment resolving the fight they just had and now Susie can kind of say her piece and say that Mixie was right about her and that she's historically a terrible friend again making me so badly want to know what she did to d so Susie and mixie though now will go to this colorful apartment complex i really like this sequence it looked really cool and it was fun and it is them looking for this last person who's being tracked they go door to door and they finally hear a kid screaming who they think is zen but it's just some random loud kid and she's like i'm sorry i'm looking for my son and the mom goes you can take mine if you want that was great but all hope is not lost, and this is why it's important she always brings Mixie with her, because Mixie catches these things, and Mixie sees the laundry button in the elevator, and they find the man who gave her Sonny is there. He is the last one being tracked, and he says, we should talk. Now, this is definitely a misdirect to me that he isn't evil. I think that we're going to find out a lot about Masa, and that because he's being tracked by Yakuza, I believe that Sonny is actually originally intended to protect Susie, and that... He was giving her that from Masa, like he said, and that Masa is still alive and he's the one who is in hiding from the Yakuza somewhere. So I think that this guy is actually a good guy here and that him being tracked is the answer to that. So we'll see if we can get old Sonny back online, which it seems like they're hinting at at the end of the episode here. But I'm sure the next episode we're going to get a bunch of answers, especially with him saying we should talk. And we didn't see any of Masa this episode, so that makes me feel like the next episode is going to be a big Masa episode. So overall, I'm going to give this episode a 7.8. It wasn't my favorite of the season, but it did have some really good moments. I did like the apartment complex scene. I liked the fight Mixie and Susie had, and I liked the resolution they had. I thought that was the strongest parts of the episode. There was still some really good humor as well. I do think it needs to pick up the pace a little more, though, at this point, especially being we're already eight episodes in. We think we still need a little bit more answers here and the yakuza stuff is just not as interesting as the Susie and mixie stuff my favorite thing about this show is Susie and mixie together i think they have great chemistry together they're both really good actresses and it's really fun just being with them i think that's my favorite part of the show right now and i still do really like the mystery as well so it's keeping me intrigued i want more people to watch the show though like i'm surprised how many people aren't talking about this show i thought it'd get more pickup i'm gonna finish it all the way because i'm enjoying it so much at the end of the day it's one of my favorite shows of the year i just feel like I'm on like an island by myself. So if you're even watching these, leave some comments. Let's talk about it. I'd love to just get more feedback about the show in general and tell your friends about it if you like it. You know, I feel like this is just being so slept on. Let me know what you thought of the episode down below though, all your theories. I read every comment, try to respond as many as I can. Hit that sub button so you don't miss one of my reviews of Sunny. I also have an X-Men channel if you're into that. Please subscribe to that as well. And I have celebrity interviews as well. And I'll see you next time.